All right, here we are again, episode number two with uh, the one, the only, Aaron Ventura. Nah, <laughs> yes, sir. Come on, the the <laughs> man, the myth, the legend, Aaron Ventura. Man, hey, yeah. let me tell you a little bit about Aaron Ventura. <laughs> this guy is special, and man, I'm not just saying that because he's here. Um, I've had the privilege of working with him now two years, and um, I mean, just the most. If I had one word to describe him, I would say it would be something like excellence. Uh, he just always comes prepared, um, just has a, a zeal for, for excellence. He doesn't uh, settle for any anything less kind of thing. Um, man, I don't want to hype you up too much, but I'm, do just, it, I'm, I'm just saying, don't man, like <laughs> you seriously do. Like you have this level of professionalism um, and it uh, and it really translates, you know, and it, it um, you know, it comes across to all of us and it pushes the rest of us to, to really have that same uh, level of excellence as well. And it pushes us to want to be better. And so I appreciate that. Hey man, tell, tell them a little bit about like uh, what you do here. Um, how do you follow us. that up, man? <laughs> 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 no, no, man. Praise God for every, everything. I think that, um, he's giving us an opportunity to, to get to certain places. Right. And, and it's only by his grace, right. By his, by his will and everything that we get to do anything. So I think that, the excellence thing, I think it's he's he's all deserving of it, right? So Amen. I think that's why it's so natural for us. You're the exact same way, so I think it's a you're, you're definitely setting that example for me here. So and just letting me know that you know he deserves nothing less, right? Um, <clears throat> but first, sorry, thank for thank you for having me on yeah. here, right? It's been uh, thank you for accepting the invitation. I've been ready. I've been ready. I've been excited. I've been wanting to come, you know, and just talk to you and. Obviously, I didn't want to be the first one either, but <laughs> 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 no, but I'm definitely ha happy to be here. So, um, just thank you, man. Thank no, you. yeah, man. Again, like, um, you know, I, I kind of uh, said something similar to PCJ, but I've admired you from afar. I, I know you've had the privilege of um, not just working here, but you've uh, worked at uh, other churches and, and done different <laughs> events where you've had the opportunity to, to play um, for I don't know, several hundreds of people and stuff like that, and only by the grace of God. For sure. Yeah, nothing less than that. I can't take any credit for that. You know, obviously, he connects you with, with great people, and, and for me, it's, he's connected me with great friends, you know. That is, I don't even want to say just connected, but he's blessed me to have, you know, amazing friends that have, you know, open doors and taught me a lot of things. So we get to do all this for the glory of God, man, and that's ultimately what it is. So. Amen. But here here at our church, let's yeah. let's get into a little bit about, you know, here at our church, because most of our listeners, you know, our audience are going to be people from uh, from our church. Right. You know, um, what do you do here? Like, uh, what what exactly <coughs> does it entail? Like, cause they might say, like, oh, he just has a, the title. He's just, you know, yeah. the the worship leader or director, or, you know, whatever it is. Like, well, what exactly go, goes on, like, behind uh, the scenes and stuff? Well, shout out to the, the Reignite fam, right? The Reignite Amen. youth fam. We love you guys. I'm so proud of every single, you know, young person that's involved and those that, that just come out, you know, and support. Um, I think that's something that makes it super fun to be here, you know, just yeah, seeing no. people, just getting to know everyone. I think from the first time I came here, you know, everyone made a, you know, a special, a special impact and a certain imp impression of what it's like to be here. And for me, it's nothing more than I wanted to do but to work with every every young person here. Like, I've been able to hear stories and you know, have people share with me so many things that they've gone through and how they're here now. Yeah. And, you know, working with young people has been the biggest blessing from 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 for me and also working, you know, in in the youth worship ministry, that's something that's been able to push me and challenge me, you know, to not only lead but to learn from them as well. So yeah. That's where I'm involved in. You mostly work with, um, I would say and correct me if I'm wrong, but mm -hmm. the the singers. Is yes. that right? Mm -hmm. Um how does that go like uh, what's that relationship like working with the singers oh man working with the singers i think it's a cool it's a great opportunity because you get to not only see them uh in administration mode right but you get to see them and and and, and learn from them and who they are as people yeah. before they go on to the stage right quote unquote stage or the altar you get to um like for me it's been something where i've been able to learn from them and just kind of hear where their hearts are not only uh, from an administration t uh, standpoint but seeing what they're feeling that week or yeah. how, th how they're wanting to express what God is doing through them that week. You and know, 
I, I love what yeah. you're saying because <clears throat> you know even just you know as you're answering these questions yeah. like i keep hearing learning man and, and yeah. i know that that's that's really you and uh um we've had several conversations enough to where i know that that really is you like always looking for an opportunity to learn for right sure. never satisfied with what you already know and i think that because of that it's why you're in the position that you are today again being able to um you know go to different events you know travel um get invited to places and stuff like that um you don't just uh um i think you play more than one instrument is that right yeah play i started playing drums when i was like six then i went to bass and then piano where i learned uh, around 19 and that's Pia where i've kind of stayed piano is more more of your like that's yeah, where that's you my you feel here let me ask let me ask you an another question man because um, I really want to get into this subject. Okay. Um, I want to get into to worship, man. And I want to like, I want to almost like dissect it a little bit and hopefully go kind of deep into it. Yeah. Um, but from a different perspective, a perspective of like, you know, from someone who doesn't know God, right? Because we have this Christian lingo, right? Where yeah. we talk, you know, like, <laughs> you know, yeah, you got to press in and you got to do this and that. And um, people are like, what <laughs> you know and don't really like understand it so you know as someone who is a musician you know who sings um you know wh what is worship man that's a that's a really good question i, I don't want to overthink it either because it's not so much of a it, it can be a theological question and yeah, answer, no, right? but sure. i want to if i had to just just say what it is to me i think worship is just that that communication between me and God and that comes mm -hmm. through that that works through the presence of God you know the Holy Spirit you know does some type of I guess you can say like a bridge from me to God how do I communicate with him and in this case there is prayer there is you know a conversation between me and God but worship is something that comes through a different level of communication you know you seek him and it's almost like you're acknowledging who you're who you're um, giving your praise and your like your thanks to yeah but in this case if you want to say worship it's in my case it's almost through a song but it doesn't have to be through a song it doesn't have to be through a musical instrument worship is just how you speak to god and how you you know give him thanks for everything he's done kind of like it's almost like an expression right <laughs> exactly, where yes. like it, it could be different ways right that you can yeah. express yourself you don't always necessarily have to sing right for sure for some people it's it's playing a song right for some people uh, or, or playing an instrument, you know, uh, for some people it might be um, lifting up their hands, you right. know. Um, I mean, there's just different ways, right, that you can, um, you know, express to God how you feel, right? Your, your, your gratefulness, you know, whatever it might be. Um, because, you know, I think that's where it begins, you know, uh, with our relationship with God is, is showing him how, how we feel. Right. And not just um, keeping it to ourself, but but literally showing him, you know, hey, like this is the way that you make me feel because you've been so good to me. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, you've been merciful to me and I have no other way of expressing it. It's almost like telling him, like talking with him, but expressing him and basically expressing to him what's in your heart. Right. And when you have something, sometimes I like to tell him, like. God, search me, you know, search the deepest parts of my heart. And I tend to list many things like, thank you for, you know, being so good to me. Thank you for saving me, right? Thank you for bringing me out of where I was, right? Yeah. Or or for still allowing me to be here today. That that within itself is also a worship, you know, giving him gratitude. And just like you said, an expression of what's in here, transcending, you know, as a, in this case, a vocal expression to him, that's what's worship to me. Yeah. You know, he, he wants to constantly know that you know you know, how good he is to perform him as well. You know, and I think that that's powerful because, you know, a lot of times in our services, you know, um, we want to, you know, experience this, you know, um, I can't give it another word other than like experience, but, yeah. um, you know, again, for, this is for someone who's like a non-believer because, you know, even the people that are, you know, going to our, our church, even though they're there, that doesn't necessarily mean that they believe, you know. Of course. Um, so, you know, I say that because they're like, well, I've never felt what they're saying. You know, I've never felt the presence of God. You know, they say, yeah, like lift up your hands and you'll feel the presence of God. Oh, like, well, what is that? You know, I've never felt that, you know, um, 
And I think, you know, as a worship leader, you know, someone who's up there, whether they're playing an instrument, whether they're singing, what they're doing is, is, you know, presenting to, you know, the audience, everyone who is there, the church, a little bit of like their intimate moment, right? What they, yeah. what they did, you know, um, or how they, how they worship God, how they, you know, connect with God, you know, when nobody else is watching, when nobody else is looking. I, I know we've t- had those conversations where you said, you know, God just, he just wrecked me, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm at home, you know, and he just wrecked me and, you know, uh, just s- things that you can almost not even describe, you know, how, how God works. But, you know, that's the beauty of, of God is that he leaves you speechless, right? You, you, you almost can't even <coughs> put it into words, like how God is um, just working and, and just satisfying the deepest parts of you that you don't even know about, you know. You don't even realize that something's wrong with you, and mm-hmm. then God just comes in and just, you know, cleans you up. And, and that's what worship is, you know. It's, it's a, you said it at best, is it's communication, right? It's, it's you communicating your 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 gratefulness, right? How you feel like God, thank you. And God in turn, just blessing you with things that you don't even realize that you need, you know? And, uh, and I see that, you know, with our band, with, with, um, you know, the people that, that lead us into, into worship, you know, and I love that. And, you know, you and Joe, you know, obviously doing a great job to, to encourage these young people to, to do these things, you know, give shout out to, um, Really? What's her name? Um, you know, Sophia. You know, she doesn't just do it um, through uh, through worship, but she I mean, she does it through uh, preaching as well. Emily has surprised me a few times, so shout out. You know, always man. Uh, we got multi talented people, multi gifted people. I think that that's what, like I said earlier, you find out so many things about people that, you know, maybe they didn't even know they had, or we d- uh, we obviously didn't know they had at first, but you can see yeah. that there's something more, right? I always feel like that's something that I find myself telling them is that there's so much more. There's mm-hmm. so much more than just a, and I don't want to say like it's not like it's not enough, but there's so much more than just a voice, right? Because he's giving you more than a song. Amen. Just like the band, he's giving you more than an instrument. He he can use you through that instrument, but he also wants to use you in different ways as well. Like you mentioned something, you mentioned something really good about yeah. the how it's how this is almost a a result of what's happening, you know, behind the scenes. Or mm. I think something that I was meditating on or that was kind of in my, in my, in my heart a lot last week is the secret place. Right. And I used to be really big on like talking about that and just kind of explaining that. But lately it's been tugging on me, you know, like how, how much that has an effect on what you're doing out here. Like whether it's preaching, whether it's ministering, whether it's, you know, speaking, whether it's, you know, guiding someone through these doors. Right whatever you're doing before this, like that's going to be exactly what, or it's like so much, how do I say it? Like the, the more you do it out there when nobody's watching, that's, what's going to show out here. And I think that's, what's really, really special. And you see it, you can feel when there's something, when there's something deeper, like in this case, if you're in, if you don't know what this is about, but you feel something, right. You, you you can't help but uh, avoid that. You You can't avoid that feeling that you feel, whenever either it's worship or through the word through this through the sermon there's just always something that's tugging on you you know whether it's goosebumps or you feel chills but that's the presence of god you know that's yeah. ultimately molding you and just working through your heart and he's all, he's always been doing that to us you know in the secret place and that's all we want to show yeah no and you know i want to you know i already mentioned a few names so <laughs> i almost feel like i'd be disrespecting anybody <laughs> else if I, if I don't mention other <laughs> names no. but you know you know, Gabby and Mimi, you know, the, the work that they've done, B yeah. as well, you know, uh, what I love about them, you know, or really any one of them For sure. is um, whenever, and, and you can see how they're really working on this, and, and I love to see that, and I hope if you're watching this, <laughs> man, like, this is what I want to see from you girls, it's just that authentic- authenticity, that you can see it, you know, that, that you really mean what you say, you know, um, and it, that really translates like, like nothing else when, when it's like it's you can tell it's coming from the heart that you really mean that. And, and I can see that like, you know, you guys really pushing to do those because it's hard to do that. Yeah. It's hard to, to be vulnerable. It's hard to allow other people to 
uh, to see you, right? And, and now all of a sudden you're transparent and, and people can judge you and people can say like whatever they want to say. And, 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 you know, that's hard. But, uh, you know, there's this uh, famous saying, I'm, I'm not going to remember who says it, but you know, they talk about um, the man in the, in the arena. I don't know if you've heard it. So there's a, a, a saying talking about, yeah, the man in, I think is like Franklin D. Roosevelt or something, one of them. I don't know. Uh, hey, uh, Jamie, excuse me, Julio. Oh, look that up <laughs> for me real quick. Put it, put it up there. Uh, <laughs> the man in the arena, the man I'm in the sorry. arena, <laughs> the man in the arena, um, it talks about how, you know, you know, the people that are watching, you know, always criticize like, yeah. oh, I would have done it this way. Oh, I would have done it that way. Why didn't he do it like this? You know, like, you know, just judging. And it's like, bro, like. <laughs> You know, there's always going to be someone that or there's always there, there's always going to be another perspective to something, you know, and I think if you constantly wait on trying to satisfy or please, yeah. you know, that other comment or that other perspective, you're never going to allow yourself to release something or to potentially say something that someone else could possibly be needing or you, you, you or you yourself, you know, could be needing to just share that mm -hmm. or let that out. Right. And shout out to my team for real. shout out to every mm -hmm. single one of them, Come the on. band, the singers, the every single one of them i'm so proud of them um you, the way you mentioned it was perfect you know they they are they constantly allow god to use them in that way and and they put themselves in a position where they could be you know criticized and they could yeah. be pointed out or but they i love that they haven't allowed that to stop them to stop them from you know worshiping to show people that you you that you too can break through right that they also have a story and a that's that's what it's about to me. amen man like for me i i will always cheer a person yeah. who who takes a risk you always. know it's it's yeah. easy to play it safe you yeah. know anybody can play it safe but the person who like takes a risk you know and maybe you bomb it right maybe you mess up um but it's like you know you learn from it you know you you, yeah. you like if you never take a risk you know you're, you're never going to be able to to grow you know you're never going to be able to go any further you know again i was talking about the man in the arena like yeah. those people that are judging you like you know it's easy to say it from up there like you know why don't you come down here you know why don't <laughs> you get in the arena or why don't you come up on stage you know and then like okay and then do it the way you said you would do it like nah like it's not that easy you know like it's easy to like th those are th i think the guy he describes it as like um he calls them like cheap seats, you know, like those are the cheap seats, man. Like the nosebleeds, the nosebleeds <laughs> man. Come on. Like you got to come. Like if you want to, like, if you have an opinion, man, like, yeah. like, please like hop on stage. Like it's not as easy as it looks, man. I think that that's the, I think that's, that's the biggest lie, right? That anybody could say is that it's, it's, it's super easy to do this and we don't do it to take the easy, easy way out. Right. Without like you or what I was thinking about whenever you said this without a risk, there's no, Re yeah. reward right and if we constantly kind of keep ourselves bottled up or keep ourselves sheltered too much to the point where we don't do what we're called to do right or what, what, what we're called to speak of then we're never going to get anywhere we're never going to yeah. see the potential we're never going to be able to see what he's wanting us to do yeah and i think there's something man like about you know when, when you're talking about risks like like there's a level of like fear Always. You know, like yeah. all of a sudden, like you're like, oh, I don't know. Like, I'm afraid that <coughs> if I do this, I'm going to bomb it. I'm afraid that if I do this, people are going to judge me. I'm afraid that, you know, like just whatever it is, the fear is like fear has a way of just like crippling people, man. Like it just shuts you down. Like you yeah. just you won't do it. And it's like, wait a minute, man. Like if you allow fear to, to do that to you, like you'll never accomplish, you know, the call that God has over your life. Like. God has given everyone a call. You know, he has given them a gift. But I think the difference is some people, you know, expose fear for what it is. And it's just mental, right? Others attack fear. Like, you know what? Like, I know what God has put in my heart. I know what he's telling me to do. I'm going to go and get it. Like, I don't care what people say. You know, I don't care what, you know, what happens. Like, I know I'm going to be better if, if I can just do it, you know, and, and, and then get past it, you know. So there's something about, you know, just being brave, right, and saying, like, I see you fear, but I'm not afraid of you, you know, and, and I'm going to, like, I'm going to move past. I'm, I'm just going to go for it, you know. And, you know, once you do it, you know, like, 
you're like, okay, like it wasn't that bad. I survived it. I'm okay. Like it didn't kill me, you know? Uh, so it's just, you know, you, you just have to go head on. You just got to go in and, and do it, you know, and it can't allow sometimes it to stop you. Try it. I think sometimes you just have to step in there and be willing to step into that fire, you know, to step into that, you know, that place, that danger, right. Or that, you know, like you said, the state of vulnerable, vulnerable, like, right. Yeah. Vulnerability. Yeah. yeah, for sure. I think that if you're, you're wanting to do something you should do it like obviously be wise and have wisdom right and discernment and 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 think about things right but if you feel something tugging on you why hold back right yeah absolutely i don't think you'd in any way would want to ever be like reckless right (laughs) just (laughs) go out there and just go like bomb it i mean to to be honest again i i've been in some ways like a little i don't want to say reckless but i mean i've taken chances and i've bombed like pretty bad but you know i feel like I feel like it's it's gotten me to where I am today, you know, and you know until you're doing that. and it's even if anything, like it's even helped me with my personality, you know. Like I've been at a point where like I was afraid of saying anything because I, I knew people were gonna judge me or not like me and stuff like that. But uh, I quickly realized that like if you do that, then you just always shy away. You become a shell of yourself, and yeah. and you never amount to to who like you are, you know. It becomes a part of you because it takes over you can you can allow it to take over without even knowing sometimes you know you mentioned something right now about you know not wanting to say anything I, that's some, that's my life story that's mm. the story of my come life come on man. hey tell me like, about it man come on for real i guess if i could summarize it right uh always growing up i always i and i to this day i don't know why it was such a big fear well i do but i don't right it's kind of that mystery right yeah. why, why you're why you grow up feeling a certain way of of having a fear to speak like me i always grew up not having like not having many friends and not even for like a pity party or anything like Mm. i never had them i didn't i didn't look for it i didn't maybe i did want friends but i i was so comfortable like not speaking to anyone and i and that took me to a place where i was just in this loneliness you know and and it's easy to fall into something like that i remember uh like being in a conversation with you and Beruman yeah. and he mentioning that, like, he's like, he almost didn't even recognize you. Like you were a completely different person Yeah. because when he knew you growing up, like you were really shy and you wouldn't like Crazy. talk, you wouldn't say anything. And I know I was like, no way, no way. Because the Aaron that I know now, like, you know, <laughs> it's like just goofy, always laughing, always cracking jokes, just socializing with everybody. Like, you know, it's like, how did that ever like come to be? I'm telling you, man, like it was like a, it almost felt like a day, like a night and day thing, but mm-hmm. at a, it hit after a certain point. Like I got, I had to get to a certain point in order to understand why I couldn't be that way any, any, anymore. Like I think when he knew me back then, you know, I was very okay being sheltered. I was, he was one of the few people that I grew up speaking to, you know, and, yeah. and I was fine with that. And I didn't, but it got to a point where, obviously, you can't be with people all the all the time. So I was always by myself. Like I was very. Mm. Like, I guess you can say now, be, be people like to say, like, the introverted, like, yeah. uh, you know, identity or, you know, characteristics. But I definitely grew up that way. But it took it, it took me all the way to when I was, I want to say, 18, 17, 18, wow. to where I, I had to completely come to a point where I had to analyze every everything. And, you know, the Holy Spirit, man, it's crazy how it happened, you know, be super quick, but, like, I was at a I was at this conference, right? Okay. And I had I had nothing. I was in depression. I was in, you know, wow. I was in like many real things. depression, yeah. like deep depression. My 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 depression was more ment- mental, like okay. you know, sometimes it could be worse than other days. Sure. I think I, I'm pretty sure other people have had it worse than I have. Like okay. I hear stories and, you know, it blows my mind yeah. how deep it can, it can go. I definitely think that it was headed there. Um there were thoughts of certain things, you know, whether it's suicidal thoughts and all these things. And I don't, wow. know, but it didn't get. I, I don't think I got to the point where other people have had it now. Now, sure. now nowadays, where the, where I hear it's definitely at, at another level. But I think I was headed that path, you know, to that path or down that path. And I remember just telling God, like, I can't, like, mm. I can't do this anymore. Because at first I was okay with it. I was okay with not having any type of communication with people. You know, it had to do with my insecurities, with self worth. You know. Wow. identities uh self-esteem you know whether it's overweightness all, all the all these things right and it had to, it really just cluttered my mind man and it took me into this darkness right where you start to constantly try to find the approval mm-hmm. and you can't find it because you're trying to do it all the wrong ways right no, exactly. and um 
So I just finally said, like, God, I need you to take this. Like, I, I need you to take this or, or, or I can't any, any, any anymore, you know? So you and think it was at the conference? Like, did it happen there or at the I, event? I think so because, um, you know, maybe you're watching, you don't know what's happening, like what church is and stuff yeah. like that, but it, it's – there comes a point where you need something more. I, I think that yeah. whether you're a believer or not, we've all experienced the the moment where we want something more to, to satisfy, you know, whether it's a void or uh, a pain, you know, we, we want something. Yeah, to you take just know that there's got to be more. There's got to be more <coughs> like sure. something that can like uh, rescue you from, from yeah. what you're what you're going through. Absolutely. Yeah. And I didn't have this like crazy event where like some traumatic event that took took me there. Like, no, it was just a mental battle for me. I let thoughts and, and wow. I let those voices that told me that I wasn't good enough affect me to that point where I said like, all right, maybe I, maybe it's maybe it's true. And I started to accept that truth, you know, from for, for what it was. But I told God, take it, you know, just like his word say, you know, cast your cast your cares on him, right? Amen. Cast your pain, cast your fears. That's how yeah. I took it, you know, cast everything that you don't that you don't need to have, that you don't need to bind you, that you don't need to be holding you. And I almost fell to the point where I was in chains, you know, and and the more I said it, the more I could feel him like taking those things away. Wow. And basically to to summarize it, he he completely like flipped the script, man. Like he told me, you know, you are good enough. You know, you are wow. you are more than a conqueror. Right. He turned my my pain into joy, you know, my sadness and depression into into just overwhelmed joy man and 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 such a peace that i had never wow. felt and um I have, i've never heard the audible voice of god but it's almost like i could feel something telling me you'll never be to be the same mm. and i was like no way like i don't i don't, I don't have i don't speak to people i don't have conversations with people i don't interact with people but he was like you'll never be the same he's like you'll never be able to hold back from sharing what i've done for you in this moment and sure enough man like i don't i don't remember like having to transition to that but i've I went from like not wanting to speak to people to not being afraid to have conversations like this. Right. I think if it was back then, I wouldn't be able to sit here with you. Wow! But I'm, I'm I'm glad now that it's been able to turn around. That's crazy. So it wasn't like a progression. It wasn't no. like where like you know slowly like or even something mental where you're like you know what yeah. like I'm just too much into my head you know or maybe I'm just you know like was it just almost like something supernatural where you felt like God just took that fear took whatever it was away and just yeah. freed you from it. Yeah. Like I said, I feel like I wasn't changed. Like I, I, I didn't, there's been very few times where I feel it to where it's that real mm -hmm. to where it feels that real. You know, it almost feels like literal chains on you or a, a weight on you. And when I felt that that was gone, there was no denying that from, 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 for me, there was nothing telling me that no, way, no, no one could tell me that there wasn't a God. No one could tell me mm -hmm. that there wasn't a, a, a Holy spirit, you know, something super nat natural. And I think, um, now it's, it's easy to try to deny that, but I could not deny that. And even to this day, you know, I, I remember that like it was yesterday. And sure, I, I still get nervous. I still get scared to speak to people. I don't, it's not like I'm constantly going around like, hey, guys, you know. It almost seems like it, man. It almost no, seems like you walk all, up man. to everybody and be like, bro, how you doing, man? You doing all right, I just man? Think that. I and just, just being goofy and, you know, whatever. And He's just I been mean, too good, man. I, he's been so good to the point where you can't. I can't waste, I, I can't waste an opportunity to potentially, you know, help someone or, you know, talk to someone. There's always somebody that needs you to talk to them. And I was that person. I think that's why it's like that for me. Yeah. Because I was always that person that was like, man, like I would see somebody go talk to a person. I was like, man, I wish you talked to me, you know, mm. like growing up when I was little. Yeah. I, shout out to my brother. Like, I love my brother. Like if he, I think if it wasn't for Danny, like, you know, helping me through so many things growing up, he was like, he was that person for me. I think wow. he was the one that helped me kind of get through a lot of the things that I had. Maybe he didn't know either what I was going through or what I felt, but I think having someone to talk to, you know, and I think that's why it's easy to do it now. Wow. Yeah. To just wow. speak to people. Hey, shout out to Danny, man. Come <laughs> on, man. You better be watching this. Um, <laughs> but um, that's awesome, man. Like, I think we all need somebody like that, right? Yeah. That's why, like, friends are important, you know, um, obviously family member like people who like believe in you people who lift you up and don't break you down right, right? because there's always those relationships where um you know there's some that like lift you up and there's some that tear you down right. for and sure. for some reason for for some people it's really hard to to stay away from those people who um who tear you down it's like you know that they're tearing you down yeah but yet for whatever reason 
you hang, uh, on, for you hang on yeah and maybe you know it's like it's because they're your family or whatever right it's your mom <laughs> it's like it's hard to like our mom deuces no but okay, man. There's no way. but you know like um I, I i definitely think that you need to have good people in your corner you know you, you have to make sure that you have the right people around you you know and i think that's important with you know with your friends you know to, to choose the correct friends you know because as much as you might think oh no i'm strong and and they're not going to influence me. I'm going to influence them. Um, it almost never works out that way. You know, um, it, it almost always, you know, seems as though like as soon as you start hanging around, you know, the wrong kind of people, I'm going to just say wrong kind of people, but people who, who, um, influence you and in things that, you know, in your heart, like are morally not right. It's just not the right intentions, you know, like the same intentions that you might have. Mm -hmm. or might Exactly. Have yeah. So if you're like, if you're going in a certain direction, yeah. right? Like you should never be associating yourself with people who are going in a different direction. Now, n I know this is where we get like heat and we're talking yeah. about, well, that's like, you guys are, you Christians are like hateful, right? You can't hang around with people and like Jesus hang around with sin sinners and, you know, y you want to bring up these arguments, you know, but um, the reality is, you know, um, you are like who you hang around with, you know? And it's one thing to want to go and rescue somebody, you know, and to to uh, be their friend. Uh, it, but it's a whole nother thing to to basically become them, you know, and, and because you spend so much time with them. And before you know it, like you're talking like them, you're acting like them, you're dressing like them. You know, that's where you have to, like, evaluate yourself and say, wait a minute. Like, are they becoming more like me or am I becoming more like them? You yeah. know, like and, and if, if it's the other way around if you're becoming more like them then then you got to pump the brakes a little bit and say well, hold on a second like yeah, i mean there are, i think there always has to be some type of a uh, reflection like you have to constantly think about where a friendship or relationship is going you know i i think that's kind of where we've clashed at times before like yeah. talking about like acceptance and all these things like me i i i always like to like find the good in someone you yeah know? and i think that's in the past it definitely kept me it definitely kept me like being trying to be with trying to be with certain people you know sure like the friends i have now I, I love every one of my friends and i think it hasn't been something that i've had to like like beg for and i think right you know i think the right friends will 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 see the best in you you know they'll be like they'll be able to know what you need and and how to push you to become better right and if they're not doing that then something's something's not right there like if your friends if your if, if your friends don't see your intentions your goals your dreams yeah. and you know potentially who you are and and what you're trying to be and how you're trying to be then something's wrong you know if, if they're not doing that so yeah see and that's where we're like different bro because i always see the worst <laughs> in people you know? uh, <laughs> i'm just like I don't say nah, bro. No, 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 no. <laughs> no i'm playing i'm playing but um no i i i definitely agree with you know like yeah and that's please believe like i've wrestled with this as well mm -hmm. right like keeping certain friends right and maybe like keeping them but keeping them at a distance because you know, you can't like they say like play with fire. You know, you, you can't that. do that. You, if you like are around certain things, um, you know, especially things that are appealing. Like, h how are you like supposed to always overcome it? And like, oh no, I'm good. Like, I, I'm not gonna uh, indulge myself in in those kind of activities and stuff like that. Especially when you know that they're having fun, and you know, especially when they're like trying to push you to do it as well, do whatever it is that they're doing. You know, like it's hard, you know, and yeah, it's man. like life is hard as it is, you know, and then for you to like make it even harder, like on yourself. Um, yeah. Sin is very appealing. You know, it, it, it's the hard truth. Uh, it's I don't think we we'll want to admit it, but, you know, I, I say this often, like uh, we're sinful by nature, mm -hmm. you know, and that's why we have to, um, you know, battle that, you know, and, and, and be prepared and, and, and like um equip ourselves so that we don't follow in that direction because again it, it's about where are you going you know where are you headed you know and if if people are directing you in the wrong way you know like you, you have to be careful you you have to i, I hate to say dis disassociate yourself like that's I don't, I don't think that's the correct term but um definitely if they're not willing to to join you keep them at a distance you know like man preach to him man like yeah, talk to him be a you balance, know? right right like talk to him but um definitely don't allow it to to cost you your soul yeah. right that that's the big thing again like you said it 
always reevaluate yourself. Where are you? You know, um, have you been like falling back? Or have you been drifting back? And, like you don't even realize it, right? That yeah. you begin to drift. I, I think it's important for you to to constantly evaluate yourself. And the Bible talks about it. You know, to examine yourself. You know, because if you don't do it, you know, um, like you feel like everything's okay or like you're going in the right direction when you're really not. And it happens in such a way where you almost don't even realize it. You know, you become a certain thing or you become a certain way. C- certain things become habits and you begin to be okay with it and you almost start to like it, you know? Exactly. No, that that's just what it is. Like you said, it's very pretty. You know, it's very appealing. And you can begin to not even realize it when you're there, right, until you're there. And I think that's where, as Christians, we have to be careful, right? Yeah. We have to be careful with that because that's very real. Like, you don't <laughs> even realize it. And, like, before you know it, you know, you're more tolerant of the things of the world, right? You're like, oh, no, that's fine. Like, I don't, I don't see a problem with that. Well, of course not. Like, you're around it all the time. You know, it, it's become normal to you now. So, it's like, oh, like, you know, a gay couple, like, oh, like, I mean, like, what's wrong with that? You know, like, whereas before it was like, <gasps> like, no way, you know, and, you know, I, I hate to bring up th- that subject because, you know, I don't, I don't want to be, I don't want to come off as hateful, and I feel like that always, that's what it always comes off as, like, when I say, like, you know, uh, when I talk about gay people, you know, I, I think, you know, it's something that I have a lot of empathy for, like, for those people, yeah. because, you know, it's something that, you know, and I don't know if we, if we should go into this or not, but I, uh, I think with homosexuality and people might disagree with me and if there's like scholars and stuff like that and theologians, theologians, and and maybe we can dissect this a little bit. Like with homosexuality, like I personally think, you know, some people will say you're not born with it. You're not born gay. Right. I like would almost disagree and maybe I'm wrong. Okay. Like, uh, I'm willing to hear like someone so you, out. You think they are? You think they are born like that? So That's I, th- I do think they, that they're born gay. But okay. l- l- let let me explain what I mean by that. <clears throat> I believe that everyone is born with a particular sin nature. That that's what mm-hmm. I believe, right? And an inclination towards a sin. So like some people might be a lot more susceptible towards like uh, alcohol. You know, right. like it's just like one one drink or two drinks just did it for them. The rest of their life they're alcoholics. For other people, it might be drugs. Like they smoked weed one time and now they're hooked. You know, whereas for some people, like they smoked and they're like, yeah, I'm good. Like <laughs> I, I don't need this. Other people, it might be a different type of sexual immorality. Maybe it's, you know, uh, fornication, right? Where it's just like they just can't stop uh, but but continue to do that. So right. I believe everyone <laughs> battles with something. It's always That's very true. For, for some people, it's it's just different things. And unfortunately, I think for for homosexuality, the, the the difficult thing about that one is that with the rest of them, I think we recognize that they're wrong. But with that one, it's like they're trying to, or people try to make it like, no, it's not that they're wrong; it's that we don't understand. And it's almost like we mix up the uh, acceptance and tolerance with uh, approval. You know, something like like that. I don't know if that makes makes sense. No, like I me. It makes sense to me. Like me, I've gotten used to, like I guess you can say tolerating or, like it was, it's not something that, like you know how you said, you know, like me, I don't. If I see someone walk in the room and I know, like it's not gonna stop me from speaking to them in a certain way. Like I think that, and I'm not saying it does to you. For sure. You obviously, you obviously just ex- ex- like express, you know, how you feel about that. But I think that like. For many people, it's something that, to me, where you, not you, but like to me, where people can, me, kind of put a, put a wall up within themselves and that person potentially, uh, learning, you know, from who you are and what you believe in is, not even speaking to them, you know, and not even accepting the, not accepting, but not even understanding, trying to under under uh, understand where they come from, sure, and how they came to be that way, you know, whether they're born with it or not, right? Like in this case, if someone was trying to go either way i i can definitely agree with you and tell you that and say that this is something that one of the things that many people may struggle with right many people may struggle with you know an an addiction to to let's say pornography and an addiction to you know fornication and addiction to something else that wants to please whatever their 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 flesh feels right Right. wants to wants to have and in this case this is something that i think it's um almost gets put on this list of 
of, of, of sin levels, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's one of those things that it's, ju- it's, it's just as equal as somebody lying, as somebody mm-hmm. stealing, as, as, as someone, you know, even thinking a thought about someone else, right? And we've kind of put it in this, in this, like, pedestal in some ways. And in some ways, they're their their plans have worked right like we we almost put it, we almost put homosexuality on this pedestal when it, to me it's just as equal as any type of yeah, sin right sin is and sin yeah and it's i think it's one of those things that i think believers struggle with and how to approach it like yeah. i i'm i'm glad we talk about it you know I, I think anyone that struggles with should be willing should be should want to talk about it right or I, I say struggle right because i feel like that's something that holds you back i think it's something that binds you right we can go we can go into that topic for 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 so many hours but it's ultimately it's something that people struggle with right born with it or not and and it's something that can hold us back from if it holds us back from speaking to them it right. potentially makes us look a certain way which for sure. is not even the case like i think that maybe in the maybe in our previous gen- generations like if it's our parents oh, yeah, or grandparents absolutely. i think have almost implemented so many things in our culture that have told us like, man, you can't speak to that person or mm-hmm. look at how they are, you know? And I'm like, man, I have, I could have so many sins inside of me or I can have so many addictions and things that you won't even care about, but because someone is like, like that or, or just automatically, they seem like the bad person, you know, you never know, man, what someone else is struggling with that could be potentially just as, just as, just as bad. But yeah, no, for my, sure. My, my, my two cents, right? No, no, I love <laughs> it. love it. And, um, I mean, I, I hope, I think you're right when you said like previous generations for sure like where what you would or what I would consider homophobic I would not consider myself homophobic yeah, um, where it's just like you just reject them you don't want to be around them right. like you don't even want to talk to them like that's not I don't think that's the the Christians like especially not at this church like that's hey not. man like if if that's something that you're struggling with wrestling with yeah. um, hey man like you're absolutely welcomed here and uh, we want to love you we want to talk to you um, you said it like hear you out like hey talk to me about it yeah. you know let's let's, Always. let's let's talk about it i think the issue comes where like the way i'm talking about it it's like an issue and they're like well it's not an issue well, ho- well hold on a second like um i'm willing to hear you out i'm willing to listen to you um but i think that that's where like sometimes we can like no, neither side wants to fold it's like wait a minute it's right. a, you're, a, yeah like i'm saying it's an issue or like it's a problem or it's a um, something that is not right and you're saying like no it's right and i just want you to accept me the way that i am and it's like hey man like i love you i'm just telling you like if you ha- if you continue down this road it's just not going to go the right way but you're still welcome I'm, I'm i would love to continue to be your friend i would love to um you know uh, have you join us and 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 whatnot it's just it's one of those situations where it's, it's really difficult because um, I mean, I've had this conversation with, with several people where they're just like, yeah, you just don't get it. You know, <laughs> and I'm like, I mean, y- you have we have our beliefs, man. And I think that like you're like you said, you have you always have to get to a certain like conclusion. You know, you have yeah. to understand like they have to understand what your belief is as well. And we should always give anyone a chance to speak like right to speak their mind or, or speak their side of the story. And we have to stand by stand by our beliefs. Right. And and and. We have the resources, right, to to expre- ex- 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 explain why we believe a certain thing, right, and we have to eventually get to something, some type of. Yeah, no, thing. and and I think, you know, hopefully, yeah. um, a- as we continue down, like, the whole idea behind like even this podcast is yeah. to understand, like, hey, we're on the same side, man. We're, we're looking to to be better, you know. Um, we may disagree. But hey, let's sit down. Let's have a conversation. That's you what know? it's about, like talking and learning, man. Yeah, let's let's figure it out, right? Let's let's come together. Let's exchange ideas, you know. And I think what what separates us, you know, and you know, I say you know a lot, but what separates us is, you know, we have a book that guides us, right? That tells us, listen, this is right, this is wrong, you know, because we can we can get into the subject about morality and I love actually like recently that's one of my favorite subjects is morality yeah. like what determines what's right and what's wrong you know like how it's do tough. you know how yeah. do you know what's right and what's wrong <laughs> well for Christians it's easy I would say it's easy but I say that in, in the sense that we have a book that tells us what's right and what's wrong like you can look it up and find out okay well this is what the Bible says about it 
you know, now I know sometimes you can say, well, there's conflicting evidence, you know, like there's, well, is it in the Old Testament or is it in the New Testament? Because yeah. now there's grace, you know, and you can try to get out off on a technicality, but yeah. um, if you really study it, you can really get the, the correct answer and not what you would like it to. Because uh, we all know that, or a lot of us know that you can almost make the Bible say anything, you know, uh, and if you have to, you might even have to like tear a, a page of the book out, right? Because, <laughs> you know, that's how we are a, as humans. We want, we want it to say what we want, what we want. We want it to be con- convenient, you know. Um, I think it's easy to try to apply certain things or like, you know, pick and choose, and uh, and we've seen it so many times, man. Year years and years go by, and we see different different versions of of messages or different, you know revelations right and all these things and i think what's i think what's uh so difficult i guess you can say difficult about many people that try to understand it is the context right mm-hmm. what certain things are figurative what things are literal what things are what things are something that almost seem fic- fictional like which is a word that i hear a lot from my my friends that aren't mean mm-hmm. you know believe like believers or maybe they are believers but they have a, a hard time you know sticking to it because some of these things don't even seem like real in our in our time now right but I think if you just open, mm-hmm. open your heart, right, open your mind, and and just like you would anything else, I think the Bible is something that's gotten such a, such a hate now. Like, yeah. And I, I think I don't don't quote me on it, but I think it's become like one of the most hated, you know, topics or books too, as well, you know, and and that has so much backstory to it. But it, you almost go into it, um, not necessarily doubting it. But you almost wanted to to re- to re- re- reveal itself to you, right? Yeah. But it's all it, it's also up to how you go into it, how you for sure how you present yourself, you know, to read, and that's just me from my personal experience. Like I grew up, I was born into like the gospel, you know, I was born into the church and everything, and even even to this day, like there's some things that I don't that I tried like to tell God, like, hey, speak to me, please speak to me, because I don't understand this and. The more I open my heart, like right. the more I open my mind to it and, and allow, you know, to understand, that's when it really starts to speak to me and to where I start to under, mm. under, really understand. Amen. And and listen, I think I, I love that you brought up the subject of the Bible and reading it and stuff because, yeah. you know, I think it's hard with anything really not to go into it like with <laughs> an, uh subjective mindset with a bias where, where you're just like, you wanted to say this, yeah. right? And so you're going to read it and, and hope to make it say what you want it to say mm-hmm. right because like you hope that this is what it means because you don't want to change how you are right. right you you would almost rather that the bible uh change so that you could like live the way that you want to live so you have to come in it objectively and say like okay like let's let's break this down let's read it let's see what did what did it really mean like you said like there's some things that are literal there's some mm-hmm. things that are figurative uh there's like poetic language you know there's just different things that uh, how the Bible is, is written, you know, and and what's crazy about it is like there's levels to it too. There's layers, you know, and there's it's talking about one thing, but it's really talking about another thing, or it's talking about both things. Yeah. Um, so it's just it, it's a crazy, it's, it's it's such a deep book, and I think that's what sometimes is is a turnoff for people because it's just like it's so hard to understand. You know, it's like wh- what does it really mean? You know, yeah. and. Um, you know, I think that that's what makes sometimes it really difficult for people to to sit down and and to actually read it. It's just like, man, but w- what does this really mean, or what is it really saying? Um, but if you can come with that mindset of like, hey, like, I want to really understand what this what this is saying, you know, I think you can really get to to the bottom of it, to the real truth, and not just your truth, you know, because that's really popular nowadays. Is it's what's my truth, mm-hmm. you know, uh, what's everyone's individual truth, well, right? Well, it fits right if it fits exactly yeah. um but i mean you mentioned it right like right now it, it probably is one of the most like hated books i i feel so uh I've, i mean I've, I've read some things obviously something some articles and deals can be more like you said biased or or can be turned you know one to one to one to one side or, or whatever yeah. right but i feel like it's something that's definitely been put on a almost like a you know like a did not no for sure it's, it's easy to fall into that category and you know, nowadays, if something doesn't fit an agenda or, or mm-hmm. fits someone's, you know, truth, right? Then they won't. They but won't I like love, it. I love what the Word of God says. Is mm, like the, the, <laughs> and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna you butcher go. it now. <laughs> but the word, I know how it ends. It ends with, you know, but His word shall stand forever. You right. know, so like, 
that the time will, will pass and, you know, like years will go by centuries, whatever, mm-hmm. but his, his word shall stand forever. Right. And it's happened. It's, it's, it's holding true so far. Right. Um, you know, it, so many like years have gone by so many centuries and yet here it is still standing and still relevant, you know, still so true. And you're just like, wow. And it pierces your heart and it really makes you reflect upon yourself and like it really analyze yourself and like, man, like, am I wrong about this? And, and just really, uh, convicts you, right. you know, and that's okay. when you know, like, that's God, that's the Lord. That's, that's who doing, who's doing this. Um, I want to end on one final thing, man. Um, you know, we touched on the subject of like friendships and, and stuff like that. Yeah. And, um, I want to b- kind of go back to that a little bit because, you know, when I created this podcast, if you notice, we haven't used a whole lot of like scriptures. Um, and I'm, I've, it's on purpose because I feel like my audience and I'm hoping that my audience is going to be, um, not just Christian people, but secular people, people who don't know about God, people who are curious to find out like, what is this about? Because for us, it's like so real. Right. But that's all we've ever known. But for other people, they're like, but for other people, it's like, what, like, what are you talking about, bro? Like, you like you're crazy bro like holy spirit bro like you know casper (laughs) 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 someone that um that i know he said something and i i i I read it and it it just struck me because he says we we have been in this so long and it's it's all we know like in in some ways at least for some right i know there's some and i i respect them so much for it because they probably weren't born in this and then they had an encounter or they made a decision to to follow Christ, right, or mm-hmm. to believe in Him, right? Maybe they didn't believe in, but I think for us, it's uh, it's so much easier to believe because we we grew up with this and we don't know what it's like not to have God or right. not to know God, right? So that's why I try to always have a an open mind when when hearing people out, and obviously having an open mind with not losing my mind, like not losing what I what I what I believe in the right. middle of that or in the process of that, right? And um, I don't know why I keep wanting to touch this, but also coming out of your, like coming out of your shell, right? Like yeah. not being afraid, not being afraid to, to believe. I think that it it can be easy to kind of go, go with the crowd, like follow everything, you know, follow people, and and you know this might 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 not be the cool thing, right? Like to believe anymore. I think now what's trending is obviously constantly challenging something or or kind of countering every 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 everything in these days, and. You know, we can't be afraid to stand our truth, right, or to believe in what we believe. But it's very true, like like we were just talking about. It's 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 easy for us to believe because we know God, but we have to understand like there's people that don't. There's people that have never had this. Yeah, I th- I think you know. I mean, yeah. you said it best. Like we grew up with it, so yeah. it's like we we're coming from a place like. Like we're starting from a place that other people are not starting from. Exactly. You know, like uh, our our mind is already like, um, I, I can't think of the word, but like, it's not just bias. It's it's more than just being biased. Oh, we have a presupposition, mm-hmm. meaning like we already like are saying that this is true when somebody else is like, I didn't say that that was true. Yeah. Right. And so and it's like understandable because they don't, n- you know, they might not have not had the same upbringing or. Exactly. Same experience, right? So for me, I'm like, yeah, no, like, uh, so God created the world, and they're like, well, hold on a second, uh, why are <laughs> we like going there? Like, I, I never said that God created the world, yeah. you know. So like, it, it's a presupposition, and it's like, hold on a second, like, I never conceded to saying like, yeah, God created. So you know, you got to back up a little bit. Okay, so like, so what happened again? So like the Big Bang. Okay, so so let's let's just pretend, or or let's just go with mm-hmm. the story that you know that okay, that the world kind of just formed itself. So again, they're coming from a different, you know, presupposition. Like they're coming from a different starting place. And so for us to try to like talk to them and to communicate, you know, it's like h- how do we get across like a- and explain to them like that there's a savior, that there's a God and that there's like um, a need for a God. Not that the, not just that there's a God, but that there's a need for yeah. a God, right? That, that we're broken people and that without God, that uh, we're, you know, condemned. We're, we are headed in the wrong direction. And and that's why the Bible says that we need to repent. Repent is such a, like, I feel like people feel like it's a negative word. All repent means is, is to turn your direction, 
to change the direction. It's like you're headed in the wrong direction. You got to go this other way. Almost like a ref- like a re- reflecting point, right? And make a decision, you know, to make it make a change. Right? Yeah, it, like you have to in order to change your direction. Mm-hmm. Like you have to make a decision. Say, okay, I know I was going this way, but I got to go this way right. because this this is leading me to death, and this al- this way is leading me to life. So um, I think that's important, especially for us Christians to understand that, that, right. hey, listen, not everybody's coming from the same starting point as you. You know, like you have to understand that they have different ideas, different thoughts. Um, and again, this is why I, like, I created this space. Like m- my whole goal with this is to create a bridge between like Christians and uh, non-believers and, and have them say like, okay, um, let's talk this out. Like h- how can we figure this out and, and, and understand you know, and, and hopefully they can understand, like, where we're coming from, you know, and they can, like, recognize within themselves, you know, analyze themselves and say, okay, like, maybe I am broken. Maybe what, what I've been struggling with isn't just a consequence of, like, um, my surroundings or, like, my mom or whoever, like, you know, blame it on other people. Maybe it's a consequence of sin. Maybe it's something that th- there's just always been a void inside of me. You know, we would say that there's a God-shaped hole inside mm-hmm. of everybody and um, that that's why, you know, we're always seeking after seeking after the passions of this world, like all these different things to fill that void, but those things can never, right, fill that void. Uh, we know that only God, you know, can fill that void. Uh, but again, I understand that for everyone else, that even as I'm saying these things, they're like, nope, 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 nope. <laughs> and just like, that don't make sense. I don't know what he's talking yeah, about. But, you know, um, but yeah. someone might believe it. Exactly. You know, someone might like uh, feel it in their heart and say like, okay, like, let me try this out. Like everything else hasn't worked, right? I've tried the alcohol. Mm-hmm. I've tried uh, the drugs and, and none of that stuff has worked. I've tried relationships because sometimes we even try to do it with relationships exactly. to, to feel uh, that void with relationships, but, um, you know, only God can, can, can do those things. And so, um, yeah, I don't know, man, this was fun. I don't know if, uh, if there's anything on your mind, something you want to share, uh, with not just me, but everyone else as mm-hmm. well. No, I just think that something you said well, that was a good, like, you know, when we when you, when you were saying that, you know, we started here and there's someone that's kind of on this area trying to figure it out. I think that the best thing that we can do is just, you know, be being more like him be being more like christ right amen and not not in the i don't want to say this word but i but i do want to say it like not have such a religious you know mm-hmm. mindset going into it but actually be like him and 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 be willing to put yourself in a position to where you can show them because not everybody's going to want to turn to the bible not everybody's going to want to mm-hmm. come to the church not mm-hmm. everybody's going to and i understand that not everybody's going to want to step into into in, into your world you know where you're currently at where you're currently understanding what it is what it what it's what it's about but that's when it's our job to be ourselves and what's in us you know it's it's about who's in us right Amen. you know his spirit is constantly and that's what i pray for is that it's constantly flowing through you that it's constantly guiding you and moving through you and speaking to you and through you right and that's what people need now it's to it's to really feel it's to feel the real thing man like like i think people need that 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 spirit of god to feel and to bring peace you know to bring peace to this to, to their hearts, you know, and to this world, right? People are constantly craving something more. Amen. And and I think yeah. if, if they can do what you're describing there, if they can allow the Spirit of God to yeah. really move inside of them, then they can break barriers, right? Some of the things that maybe that they're afraid of. Because, you know, as Christians, I think probably one of our biggest fears is to um, witness to people, right? Like, well, how do I do it? You know, like, how do I tell them, like, jesus loves them you know how do i tell them like you know if they continue down that path they're going to hell you know without being like that right without saying it in a mean way you know how do i witness to people you know um only through the the, the spirit of god right but you have to seek the spirit of god you you can't just you know um say you're going to do it but and then obviously they're not do it like there has to be a level of uh commitment and intimacy you know w- with god um and then you can have those moments right where it's not you speaking it's the spirit of god exactly. speaking uh, i think when you try to do it yourself it, it it comes off the wrong way like i think for me i remember having a uh, i had someone come try to witness to me one time mm. and i was i was <laughs> like maybe i want to say 15 16 
and they immediately hit me with that you know i wasn't i wasn't like rebellious or anything but i wasn't like you wouldn't know man you wouldn't know that i go to church you wouldn't know that mm. i that i was a believer i wasn't that, that wasn't Christian. yeah that wasn't the okay. first thing that i was on my <laughs> that was on my you know my myspace carry my myspace you know identity you didn't have there. a bible verse on nah, that bro nah. <laughs> jeremiah 29 11 you know <laughs> nah, bro. but their plans like no nah, come on bro it wasn't like that you know and i didn't and I was okay with that at the time. So obviously someone was trying to come speak to me and they were like, you know, the Bible says this, the Bible says that. And I remember the, f- the only thing that I was thinking through my head was, man, like they did not even ask me mm-hmm. what I'm, what I'm going through. Like they didn't ask mm-hmm. me what I'm feeling. They didn't ask me how, how they could potentially give me that help that I needed. And people need help. Like, yeah, even people, and that's the thing where people, I, I feel a lot of people struggle with understanding is that even within the, the church, like Sam, you know, like, it, it's even within the, the church itself right people need to feel the the real thing right and and that that's something that i've that i have constantly spoken against and i get and i know i get the oddball sometimes like people think man you're you're too free-spirited or you're too like i don't want to say liberal but you're too like tolerant mm-hmm. it's where i don't i don't like um like the religiosity you know what i yeah. mean yeah I don't like where it's just, you know, like uh, the Bible thumping, right? <coughs> or something like that. And I don't even want to say just that, but um, I think that there's there's a certain way to get to people. There's a certain way to, to reach that, like, bridge, right? Like you said, yeah. there's a certain way to speak to people. And, and that you have to be yourself. You have to be willing to speak to people and meet them there and, and, and know that you're not there just to teach, but you're going to learn too, right, in that inter- interaction. And that's, where I, that's what I want. Like, that's what I would want is for someone to obviously – know how I'm feeling and, and know what I need, but not be afraid to tell me what they believe in too. Cause there has to come a point where you give them that answer and it can't just be sugar coated. It can't just be too nice. It has to be, it, ha- it has to be understanding yet truthful. Right. So there has to be some type of balance that I feel. You'd almost say like, it has to be something like grace and truth, right? Exactly. You have to say, come on, I, man. I know like, you're going with that. Come, come on, on, man. Like you gotta be <laughs> graceful, but you gotta say exactly. the truth, right? You yeah. cannot, you know, take away from the truth to be graceful. Yeah, like, and there's a certain way to do it. I feel like there's a, like there's a certain way to transcend that message. I feel like Jesus, like if we were to speak to him nowadays, I feel like he'd have such a way with his words. Yeah. You know, and and when there's no words, and then that's when the Holy Spirit steps in. I'm a big I'm a big big believer in the Spirit of God. I feel yeah. like the Spirit of God does things that you can never say, that you can never do, that you can never speak about. He just it it just has a way of of healing you it has a way of you know molding those things that are so broken right and mending you right so i feel like there's always a balance and you know obviously he gives you the words and he speaks through you and but we have to be willing to let the spirit of god right move through us yeah and i think that the, the spirit of god wants to do that right? yeah it, it it it's waiting for for us to let him do that yeah. right and you know I, I started we started off at the beginning talking about how everyone's gifted man god has given everybody a gift like you can't sit here and say well god didn't give me anything you know um you know i didn't get a great voice you know i didn't get um this ability to speak publicly you know i didn't get this ability to play an instrument you know i can't dance i can't do this and that like you know like you just we just focus on the things that we can't do right right? And, and don't focus on what we can do what we're good at you know i think you know if we can recognize that we're gifted as well, like God gave us something, you just have to look within yourself and find what that is, you know? Sure. And even if you can't find what it is like immediately, cause some people are like, man, I just like, I've tried, man, I've tried mm-hmm. to find out what that gift is. And I don't know, like maybe it could be that you're a writer, maybe that you're mm-hmm. a, a drawer, like, but you don't know. Right. But I don't think you're ever going to find out just like saying like, well, I don't know what it is. I think, <laughs> You know, you you kind of stumbled upon it by by trying things out. It'll surprise you. I feel like God will surprise you. I feel like He will He will show you things that you never thought you would have. Right? It's very it, it's very different. It's very different when you let that in. When, whenever you open your heart. Yeah, I think if 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 we could just say like God, like use me. You know, like you know, like you're the one that formed me. You're the one that created me. Um, you know where my gift lies. Like. Yeah bring it out you know uh, then god will do it but but the important thing is like to not stay back right not not to hold back not to be fearful but to be bold be courageous and say okay i gotta try things even if i fail you know uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna try it because 
I want to do something with my life, right? Uh, everyone has a meaning. Everyone has a purpose. But you have to believe it. You cannot allow the, the thoughts, the, the things there, the fear that to, that to come in and just cripple you and to uh, cancel your dreams. Like you have to just uh, chase after it and say, no, like God created me with a purpose and, and I'm going to fulfill that purpose. Man, like I've seen people get like famous and like get like rich over just some really silly things. But, you know, like but they do it like there's people that are good at just um doing impressions man like they just you know I, I i don't know this guy's name but he like he can speak like you know six seven eight different like comedians i'm like yeah. man how does this guy do it hey, man. Um, you find you find some some type of skill you know but you yeah. find it right and you don't just find it though like staying quiet you know being a shell of yourself you find it by exploring by by like stepping out of your comfort zone and saying okay like um I, i've been comfortable too long like let me just you know, even if I make a fool out of myself once or twice, you know, like, let me just try some things out, you know, and, and see what I got, you know, and, and again, like, you might surprise yourself, but I believe God will surprise you even more, exactly. right, because he knows, right, he has mm -hmm. the keys uh, to everything that's locked inside of you, and he can uh, open those doors, but you have to go to him, and uh, he'll, um, he'll open those things for you, so, um, yeah, man, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, was this fun, man, or what? what I love think? it. I was definitely nervous going into it, but I think that um, I think it's something. I guess once you step into it, you feel yeah, you feel so much better. And I think that every I think every meeting, I think every encounter has a a, a, re a reason behind it. You know, I think God definitely you know has destined certain things to happen, and I'm just here. You know, I'm I took I, I definitely took a step. Of, of faith you know like mm, i didn't come know on. what was gonna happen but like even speaking about what we were doing this is what i tried to take that example you know and and apply it to my life too you know still speaking like now i i still have fear of speaking and stuff but i couldn't let i i, I didn't want to let that stop me from you know no i love it man and, and speak i'm always a big fan of those people who like again i said it earlier take risks take chances yeah. who like overcome their fear like i would rather see somebody go up on stage and like bomb it yeah. right but they did it they went up there and they tried you know and like it's like it's like I, i'm cheering for you i'm your mm. biggest fan like go for him and Just do it bro. yeah mm. i'll Just take a picture it. bro and like laugh at it later but no nah, no nah, not even not nah, for real like i wouldn't even laugh like if somebody bombed it like i'd be like nah like do it man like that, it, you know? that's awesome that you did it rather than somebody else who who's over there laughing but mm. never went up there right oh, wow. it's like nah dude like yeah. go up there man go try it you know and uh you know be who god has called you to be you know like take some risks take some chances yeah. um and let god uh you know use you you know so yeah we can't live in fear man no we can't live in fear amen um would you do this again man what definitely you yeah. you do it again you, you enjoyed it no. cool, cool. I'll do side by side again hey bet, okay. bet. so hey if you enjoyed this man please like it share it subscribe if you're not already a subscriber and um you know, if you have any ideas as to like maybe things that we topics that we can talk about or someone that we can invite hey man please um put them in the comments and we'd love to um incorporate those things thank you again for watching and we'll see you next time thanks god bless, god bless.